So this is kind of a fun circuit here. This is a multiplex LED display driver demo. Normally just to light one digit, you're gonna need a couple of things in place. You're gonna need data. Say your data represents the number one. You're gonna need a display driver. Obviously you're gonna need this uh, seven segment display. But suppose you wanted to light, you wanted to send data to three of these. Would you need, you're gonna need three sets of data. You're gonna need data for one, data for two, data for, no, for the number three, represents number three. You're gonna to need to drive each one of these. That, that data needs to be encoded so that it lights the appropriate segments on each digit so that it shows that its respective number. So would you need three display drivers? Well, you could do that. You could use three separate display drivers. Would you need three microcontrollers? Would you need three different data sources? Well, you would. You definitely wouldn't want to do that because that just wouldn't be very efficient. So there's a way to do this without you know, using all those resources. Obviously, you're just going to want to use one data source, such as a microcontroller, whatever it is that you're using to produce the initial data, whether it be one, two, or three. Then you can use, if you multiplex it, you can use just one display driver. And referring to the diagram here, we've got our three digits. So essentially what we're going to do here uh, to multiplex this is we're going to have a clock source. You're going to need a clock source to drive this. We're not even using a microcontroller here. This is a very simple relatively simple uh, circuit uh, way to demonstrate this. You have your clock source, which is your, we're using a 555 timer with an, with an adjustable frequency here. We're using that to drive a BCD counter, which basically outputs in binary. In binary, the binary output is what the display driver wants. Just the binary again is the number decimal one would be 0001. Number two would be 0010. Three would be 0011. So this is your binary representation of these three numbers. This outputs those numbers. And what we're going to do here is this essentially is a counter. So we have a 555 timer, which is going to iterate through these three numbers one at a time. So this is going to output binary one, binary two, and binary three. It's going to do that, and it's connected directly to this display driver. So basically, this is um, the data being sent through these data lines here, through these resistors, these current limiting resistors, is 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Now we have a BCD decoder. And the way we're going to multiplex this is using this BCD decoder. It's going to iterate through 1, 2, 3 decimal. So essentially, this pin, that pin, and that pin are going to go high, high, and high as it iterates through one, two, three. When we have the number one, this pin's going to be high, this is going to be low, this is going to be low. We have number two, this is low, that's high, that's low. Number three, this is low, this is low, that's high. So each of these transistors, which is our the driver transistor for each respective display, is used as a current sink. So when this goes high, the base of this transistor now this is just a block diagram. That's why you don't actually see current limiting resistors here. This is a hybrid between a block diagram and a schematic. Uh, when this goes high, this transistor is activated. When this goes high, this transistor is activated. When that pin goes high, this transistor is activated. Only one of these is on at any given time. You never have any, any more than one of these on at a time. So essentially what this does is it iterates through. We have the number one being outputted. This pin is high. This one's low, this is low, this, this transistor right here is activated. So when we have a number one, this transistor is activated here. And this display is on. That's what's happening. We have one. And then when this clock counts again, when the clock goes high again, the BCD uh, counter outputs a binary two. When this outputs a binary two, this will display the number two. Now why is it showing up here? Well because this displays the number two, this counts up to two. This pin goes low, this pin goes high now. This transistor is activated. 
and this transistor is no, no longer on. This one is on and syncing the current so that you have zero volts here. And that's important. It just brings down to zero volts. These are high so because these are, these are, are uh, common cathode displays, meaning that what's common to all these lines is the cathode or the essentially the negative side of the uh, display. So when this goes low, this will be displayed and the number two will show here. And when this clock again goes low, then goes high, this is gonna count again. This is gonna just output a binary three. Number three will display. But when the number three displays, this pin will then go low here and pin three will go high. They're not actually pinned. This is just your sequence. This goes high. This goes high. This transistor, this base goes high. And this transistor conducts. You have zero volts here. And this displays the number three. Now, that's not very useful actually for a display. If you want to display the number one, two, three on there, it's not very useful. But what we'll do is because the frequency response of these LEDs is much higher than the than human vision, you know, collectively with your your eye and your 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 ability to process the the light from the display, the frequency response is much lower than the LEDs. So as we turn the speed up here, now we're at full speed. I'm not sure how that's showing on uh, on the video, but the same thing is happening. Only one of these is just is actually on any given time. If you were to use a time lapse, or if you use a high speed photography or high speed video, you would see that only the same thing is happening. It's just going one, two, three, one, two. They're going so fast though, the persistence of your vision makes it appear that all of these are on at the same time. So that's how a multiplex display works. Now the reason you want to do this is because you're saving on components resources. If you had eight of these, if you didn't do it this way, because you had, if you had eight digits, you still only need one display driver. Instead of eight display drivers, instead of eight times seven, instead of 56 resistors, instead of eight sources of data, you're not going to want, you know, collectively you'd have over 60 components just to, for an eight uh, digit display. So for an eight digit display, basically you've got you have eight eight digits. You need to have you have five more transistors. That's all you would need. So that's why you would multiplex an LED display like this. This is a quick overview of the schematic as the detailed functionality of the circuit was covered with the block diagram description. This is a 555 timer here, which is the clock generator for this circuit. That's right here. This is your adjustment pot that is used to adjust the frequency of the circuit. This clock is connected to a BCD counter right here, which outputs in binary, which is necessary to drive the rest of the circuit. When this reaches a binary four, the pin associated with this bit, which is connected to reset, resets the entire IC. And so it effectively only counts from zero, to one, two, and three. The output, the binary output of this is connected to a BCD to decimal decoder, which basically enables one pin for one, one pin for two, one pin for three, and iterates through these transistors here, these transistors here, to enable or disable these displays depending on where the count is. So when this is display one, this one's enabled display two, that's enabled display three, that one's enabled, the other ones are disabled. This is your display driver right here, uh, which is obviously used to drive these and convert the binary data into the appropriate data to light the segments associated with the numbers that it is required to display. And these are your current limiting resistors right there. You only need one set since we're multi multiplexing. Instead of having 24, we only have eight. And you have a couple of decoupling caps right here. These decoupling caps are used on digital ICs to reduce noise. If you don't have de decoupling caps on digital ICs or microcontrollers, you sometimes and well often will have problems associated with noise generated from those clock signals. By the way, these integrated circuits here are CMOS technology, the digital ones are, as opposed to TTL technology because TTL technology, traditional technology, 7400 series, 
is constrained to a five volt operation, whereas the CMOS technology can be used with nine volts, which is what our circuit is powered here. We don't need a regulator. The, one of the drawbacks of CMOS is that it's static sens sensitive and you have to be careful with it. So that's a quick overview of the schematic for the multiplex LED display circuit demo. By the way, if you'd like to build this circuit, here is a picture of the breadboard with the schematic references superimposed over the components. Here is a picture of the schematic. and the parts list. A lot of these parts you can buy uh, in form of kits, which you can reuse for other projects. If you go to breadboardcircuits.com, there's a list of minimum recommended equipment, as well as safety tips and best practices regarding breadboards. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. For more information about this project, as well as recommended breadboarding equipment, best practices, and safety tips, please go to breadboardcircuits.com.